Fields of Haste to the global automotive industry, which is why I know about um, competition and how destructive it can be, particularly when it comes to getting countries to implement uh, the kind of policies we need to solve global problems. So, James, would you like to start? Well, just to give me a chance to um, uh, um, put the camera on, but I'm going to say a few words of introduction for you. Uh, James has been an analyst and administrator in the field of international developments and He has served as a policy yeah. advisor yeah. 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 for many international yeah. politicians and leaders, including Pierre Trudeau, Francois Mitterrand, yeah. Edward Heath, Julius Nyerere, Olaf Palme, Willie Brown, Jimmy Carter, and His Royal Highness Prince El Hassan. Quicker was a policy advisor and press secretary for the Brown mm -hmm. Commission. He was also an economic consultant for government agencies in more than 30 countries. He is co-founder of the Global Commons Trust, where he is working with colleagues to develop the Secretariat to provide research, support and publicity for a new international commission on the Global Commons. He has also launched a lobbying effort for a Commons Action for the, for the United Nations, which has been successful in introducing the concepts of the Commons into UN discussions and documents. Over the past several years, he has published a series of unique articles on the global commons through Cosmos Journal. Welcome, James. Parliament 
it marginalized the commons into uh, a very small fraction of, uh, of uh, the, the public estate for people in the UK. And that's the same thing has happened all across the world. So we're missing something very important, it seems to me. Um, and over the past few decades, the intergovernmental system, or you could call it international liberalism, has proclaimed its capacity to meet the needs of the world's population and the environment through global public goods. Public goods, not common goods, but public goods. The concept of public goods at the global level illustrates the lack of understanding and vision in the present management of the global commons. As I say, that's the atmosphere and the oceans and um, many of the um, ideas of international peace and public safety, and those are all commons issues. By definition, public goods are goods and services provided by a government to its people. The model of global public goods is virtually meaningless at the multilateral level because there's no representative authority either through individual states in association or a global institutional framework that provides public goods to the citizens of the world. So pub, the idea of global public goods is kind of a non sequitur. It's, it, doesn't, it doesn't make sense. There is no global public institution on behalf of the people of the world that provides these kinds of benefits. The United Nations notwithstanding, and the IMF and the World Bank notwithstanding. These are not truly global public institutions. National governments simply do not have the interdependent power or the legitimacy, nor are they designed to protect, manage, and distribute resources to the world's people as a whole. Global public goods is providing a rationale for the status quo of liberal internationalism. Both the private and public sectors deny that the world's collective action problems access to food and water, universal health care, education, distribution of aid and technology, transborder safety and security, world peace, a just legal and political system, a pollution-free environment, clean air, and an equitable economic system, that these can or should be managed as global commons. <clears throat> Under the present system of strong state sovereignty, non-interference across borders, and limited multilateral cooperation. Governments refuse to establish a representative basis for global resource sovereignty. Meanwhile, the neoliberal commitment by states to private and public growth is destroying the planet and leaving people dispossessed of their collective resources, unable to express or realize the intrinsic value of their local, regional, and global commons. Capitalism is failing because it does not innately recognize the need for creating and maintaining the commons. That today's uh, political economy reduces our understanding of the value of goods and services into two modes. Use value, that's the qualitative usefulness and sufficiency of things, and exchange value, the quantitative worth of these things through market prices. What simple is trying to do, and what other kinds of ideas and constructs are trying to do, is get us to understand the simultaneous value of these goods. That's a very important part of the distinction that we need to make as we move forward. Um, that I've suggested a third category for this called presence value. Instead of use value and exchange value, there is something about presence value that underlies our commons that's very important that we're all urgently trying to address because that's what, that's what we experienced as human beings before there was a private sector and a public sector was the immediate presence of things. The presence value I define is the experience of what is already right before us and within us, whether it's pre-existing or created. It's very simple. We all have an intuitive experience of that, but we've kind of lost our way in the categories of the private sector and the public sector. A political economy of presence value means that we would have a multi-level management of the commons through a metric of sustainability, quality of life, and well-being that scales from local levels of social and political organization to higher levels of multilateral governments. Citizens around the world need to find new transnational means of ensuring that their governments impose appropriate terms and parameters on both private and public goods, a new means for resource management that's global, and a way to articulate and 
reclaim this global political commons. Reclaiming our governments, bringing them back under public control and accountability, cannot be done by allowing the present ownership structures to continue, whether under individual ownership or collective ownership. We must not assume that because most of the commons have already been privatized that the situation will go on indefinitely because governments endorse or ratify these privatizations. What kind of action is necessary? The status quo response is to work through governments and maximize citizen participation in networking. Very important. However, a cross-border network of citizen action coordinating their votes on important international issues, even though it would be a great com contribution, we have to raise the question, does this create a kind of global governance that would ensure citizen trusteeship over the resources that belong to everyone, like the oceans and the atmosphere? Can we assume that governments, as they are presently constituted, would allow trusts to be created for the world's common resources when governments were expressly created to safeguard the interests of private ownership? Is this move toward global citizen decision-making simply a matter of increasing citizen voting power on global public policies through traditional channels? Can we assume that the status quo of governments will change as a result of coordinated citizen input on international commons policies? Aren't we endorsing the myth of the social contract that government represents the people, when in fact the reason for the existence of government is to protect the interests of private property? National constitutions, I believe, which protect and defend the primacy of private property need to be changed so that the co connection between the local and regional and global interests over our common resources becomes a matter of trusteeship rather than ownership. Citizens' associations which coordinate their political input across the world must be among the first to push for the transformation of individual ownership into trusteeship. Ownership is an expression of individualism. This is also true of collective ownership, where a small group of individuals is appointed to oversee the resources for the rest of the people. This is not what we're seeking. Most of the world's resources now fall under the ownership paradigm and this trend is rapidly increasing. And this is precisely why the concept of the commons is bringing forward to reestablish the idea of stewardship or trusteeship over the resources that belong to all of humanity, from local to regional to global. It is citizens' trusts that manage our global commons in the future, in partnership with governments where governments recognize their role as fostering stewardship of public goods for their citizens. This is not marginalizing governments, it's to have governments act in coordination with the rise of trusteeship at the local levels and regional levels, and also at the global levels. The real issue is not to accept the limitations of the ownership paradigm, but to create the kind of governance structures for local and political and global commons, uh, which transcend it that which transcend the <coughs> governance structures through scales through, uh, free trusteeships of the commons. Can this be accomplished under the present system of sovereign governments? Not without a deep transformation of our national sovereign structures. The economic and political catastrophes that befell the world in the 1930s and 40s inspired that generation to create a multilateral system defined by an unprecedented vision cooperation and security for the international community. And we're enjoying many of the benefits of that today. We're also in, in, uh, enjoying the dysfunctions of that system today. That system promised that global <coughs> private goods, financial investment, private credit and trade, and global public goods, aid, loans to the International Monetary Fund and World Bank, and other assistance from international development programs, would resolve the world's major domestic problems and transporter economic problems. This grand experiment in international cooperation has failed. We cannot expect it to succeed now through simply having citizen networking and coordinated democratic voting among nations. A new platform needs to be put forward that proposes a new role for government and business in the management of world resources. The kinds of expertise and understanding that people are developing through local and regional forms of resource management must reach to and be sustained at the global level. In turn, this global political commons would establish economic systems that are more fair and share, and share the necessary resources with all the uh, 
people on the planet. In bringing this new ontological political platform forward, the world's people would organize their local commons, declare their sovereignty as global citizens, and call upon governments to acknowledge the natural rights belonging to all human beings and life forms across the planet. A global political commons is necessary if we are ever going to develop global governance. But it will have to be based on a commons agenda that is both bottom up and top down. Many commons, such as the atmosphere, could be managed indirectly through a political process where citizens engage with one another and with established political processes to manage their resources through local and national governments. At the same time, local decision making requires an international support system that is generative in purpose, not te technocratic, nationalistic, or commercial. Incentives for sharing the global commons must be built into our multilateral rules and institutions. The new forms of co-governance and co-production, social charters and commons trusts, now emerging at local and regional levels, can be expected to have a major impact on multilateral coordination, cooperation, democratic global governance, and international monetary and financial systems over the next several decades, and well into the 21st century. In this scale-free system, democratic commons institutions would operate at every level of governance independently while overlapping at the same time. Citizens will thus have an opportunity to participate in decision making and production at all levels of commons, local, state, interstate, regional, global, bringing governments and corporations back under control of the public and public accountability. Now, broadly speaking, what I just want to illustrate from this chart here, and if you can see it, that's great. If not, I can sort of illuminate it, is that this kind of framework between trusts and businesses and the state will work in the fashion that's delineated here. And just very briefly speaking, a trust is created to protect a particular commons. And then um, the trust creates a measure of sustainability for that particular commons, puts a cap on that resource. And then what's outside the resource and those resources uh, can be material, solar, natural, genetic, social, cultural, intellectual, digital resources. What's outside that resource could be rented to businesses. Businesses operate exactly the same as they do now. They extract and produce the resource. They sell and distribute products for profit, and they pay taxes to the state. Now, the big difference is that the government changes its role in this situation. Instead of pretending that it's completely uh, benefiting the people, which it does, the governments support the people, but aren't the governments really supporting the corporations more than they are the people? Isn't that the, the nature of this crisis that we're going through right now? Isn't it the reason why the social contract is broken down? Well, under this new framework, businesses are um, paying taxes to the governments. Now, and the, the taxes are based on the resources that were put under the cap by the, and then extracted by the businesses from the trusts. The new role of the state is to provide social dividend for people based on the taxes paid by the businesses, as well as to restore the depleted commons that have um, been extracted through this process of renting them to businesses. The, what changes here is an ownership model. The businesses no longer own the resources. They're, they're under a trusteeship. The trusteeship rents the, the resources to businesses. Businesses pay the tax to the state. The state uses the dividends for social income, basic income for people, as well as the restoration of the depleted resources. It's quite simple. And the, in conclusion, I, I want to say and really affirm that we need uh, a coordinated and effective way to drive all nations to cooperate in solving this planetary crisis that we're undergoing by implementing a range of democratically formulated policies. We need transnational citizen action to require our politicians and governments to cooperate globally in implementing appropriate policies simultaneously for everybody's good. Is it enough for citizens around the world to coordinate their votes in national elections to solve global problems like global warming and financial regulation of the markets and environmental destruction and economic and, and social injustice? Only if the platform of the citizen network follows um, uh, a model that's based in trusteeship.
rather than the status quo of private ownership and national sovereignty. We need an open source global politics in action that would bring a sense of self-governance in the nations of the earth that is sustainable. It is the kind of self-governance governance that many local communities already practice in the management of their commons. We need to model that and scale it up to the global level. More fundamental than political agreement is unity. This unity is what the commons brings us. The advancement of oneness between all citizens of the planet, self-governance based on unity, and a unity based on our collective intentions to create sustainability, a sustainable community on the planet. It's time for a global conversation on the norms, rights, and duties of every citizen for global commons goods, the shared resources that must be organized by the world's people themselves. The global political commons is possible if it follows the path of self-governance and trusteeship. Commons is the new economics of replenishment. The commons must be created and sustained for the benefit of everyone in society. Now is the time to manifest plenty in our world, to manifest the processes needed to ensure that it is used widely and sustainably, so that everyone will get their needs met today, tomorrow, and hundreds of years into the future. Thank you.